I'd like to welcome Burke Collin to the stage to show us the next generation developer experience. Burke. Hey, welcome. Hey, what's up, you? Whoa, that was a great picture of me. <laughs> Hey, what's up, universe? It's good to be with you today. Uh, I'd like to show you an application, a demo, but it's actually more than just a demo. This is an app I've been working on and using GitHub Copilot to help me build. Uh, now, I'd like to show you what it does. So what we do with this application is we can take a uh, video here like this one. This is an excellent video. By the way, uh, like and subscribe, youtube.com slash code. We are always right? self-promoting. I have a mic. <laughs> I, have to, I have to get it out. And then what we can do is paste this in here as the source in this application. And then after we do that, we can come down and choose a prompt here, like asking this thing to create a video description complete with timestamps. Now, the reason why this works is because we are downloading the timestamps and the captions from YouTube, and then we can use that to create all kinds of content. Now, it's not perfect, right? But it does work and it gives us a place to start with. So I've been using GitHub Copilot to build this, and uh, it's worked really, really well. But GitHub Copilot, you know, we think about it for coding, and you've seen a lot of Copilot demos today, but I wanna show you how GitHub Copilot can do more than just help you write code, but help you with the entire coding process. So. One of the first things that this app doesn't have is any tests at all. Zero tests. Does anybody have an app with zero tests? I think that's Yes, common. exactly, right? <laughs> and the reason why this is is because we're busy building, right? And a lot of times getting set up testing is the hardest part of testing. And so we're going to see if GitHub Copilot can help us with this. So I'm going to come down here and go to uh, set up tests, right? And when I do that, the workspace is going to enter the chat. Oops. And then uh, when it, it, the workspace itself knows about my workspace, my project. And you can see it knows that I have a Vue.js front end and an Azure Functions back end. And I can actually refine this a little bit and say that I want to use vTest, which it gives me as an option. And it's like, great, let's create a vTest configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these changes here. Awesome. So it makes, the it makes a recommendation for you right in the context of the chat. Right in the chat, That's based awesome. on what it knows about my project here. And then it says the next thing you need to do, it's walking me through step by step. It says you need to install vTest, so let's do that. Now, what you see down here, all this business, is my API actually running. So you can see it terminates the API because we need to install this package, and it knows that. And now, running out of real estate here, let's pull this down. The next thing that it's going to ask us to do is actually run vTest. And all right, right? So we have a test here. We can actually go in and fix this. That's awesome. But that's actually not the last thing that it tells us here, right? If we jump up here and look, it says, I also recommend installing the vTest extension. So let's go to the Extension Explorer. And here's the vTest extension. Now watch this. When I install this, what it does is it lights up testing inside of Visual Studio Code. Boom, right there. This is actually what I want, right? I want to have my testing integrated with my editor. And I didn't have to know how to set that up. And you shouldn't have to know how to set that up. That should just work for you. OK, so now we have this, yeah. right? And you can see it's even telling me here that I've got an error, so we could go there. I'm actually going to have it generate another test for us. So I'm going to come down here to my API. I'm going to come to services. Let's go to the auth service here. Let's make some more real estate. I'm going to select the whole thing and type tests. now. When I do this, it notices, oh, you don't have a test file for this specific file, right? You don't have a corresponding test file. So it pops open another panel to create another one. And we can scroll down here and see all of the different tests. So let's go ahead and accept this. And then let's save it. And we'll call this auth service.test. And it's going to put it right in the services folder, which is just fine with me. So it really knows a lot about your project, your context, and your developer experience in VS Code. Exactly, exactly. And then you can see here, because of the test explorer, it's starting to light up and showing me that these tests have already run, and they're already passing, awesome. right? So this is how Copilot can help you not just write code, but get set up with the stuff that you might be avoiding, right? You don't have to avoid it anymore. Go ahead. And listen, a failing test is better than no test at all, somebody once told me. So at least get you a failing test going. All right. The next thing that this application doesn't allow me to do is debug. Now, <clears throat> I can debug in the browser dev tools. So I could come here, let's select one of these options. Like I could go to tweet and then click send, but let's say I want to capture that. All right, I could do it in the browser dev tools, but this 
Real estate is cramped, and I like to debug where I write my code, right? That's just a better experience. But again, this is something you need to set up, and so a lot of us just avoid this, and we just debug in the browser. Right, Copilot can help with this as well. So I'm gonna come down and just say start debugging. So when I do this, VS Code itself enters the chat, and VS Code knows about its own documentation, all of that's indexed, so it can set up a launch configuration for you. Now, what it's done here is it's actually set up a launch configuration for the back end, right? So we can be a little bit more specific and say um, Vue.js front end running on port 4280. All right, now let's see if it can give us a launch configuration specifically for our front end. And boom, it does. Awesome. Right, so we have a couple options here. We could start debugging directly from here. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to save this configuration. And when I do that, it adds it to my launch configurations right here. And I'm going to make one small change because I'm not using Chrome. And then let's go ahead and bounce our API. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and drop a breakpoint here. It's almost as if I've prepared for this demo. <laughs> so here's our breakpoint. Uh, actually, let's fire up the debugger first. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to fire up the debugger here. And you can see it's now in the debug choices. I'm going to click Start. And this will open a browser instance. Let's go ahead and add a breakpoint like that. And we go ahead and log in. Perfect. Oops. Let me go ahead and. So what you guys are seeing here are live demos. Everything that we're going to be showing you here today yeah. is live, because we know that's what developers really appreciate. And exactly. you can actually try everything that we're showing here uh, at home today. Right. So we're, we're, we're doing the AI stuff live in front of you, which is kind of risky, but this is, this is what it means to demo in 2024. Yeah. <laughs> here we are. So I'm going to click Send, and boom. We are debugging inside of Visual Studio Code just like that. Because again, as a developer, you're writing code. You shouldn't have to worry about writing launch configurations as well. We can solve that for you. Right? We can step through, step over. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right. The other thing this application does not have is any documentation whatsoever. This is not, we probably should not put this app in production, right? It's not ready. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, document the code using GitHub Copilot. But I'm, I'm sure that you've probably seen that demo before. I don't want to redo that demo, OK? I want to show you something different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the new Copilot editing experience in Visual Studio Code. And what I want to do is I want to get all of my services files here. So we have the auth service, the download service, and the prompt service. I'm going to drag these over and drop them. And I'm going to say, please, not in all caps. I don't <laughs> want to shout at the AI. Please document these files. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to my model picker, the new model picker. Look at the models, y'all. Isn't that exciting? Look at this. All right, and I'm going to select 01 Mini. Now, why am I going to select 01 Mini? Because I find that I get pretty good results for documentation. But the point is that you can pick the model that you like the most, that you think works best. And you can play around with different models and see which one gives you the best result. So as you see, what's happening here is the uh, changes are streaming in. So you can see that over here on the left side. And then you can see that happening across the top as well. So we have documentation for the auth service, the prompt service, and the download service. And we can go through and see the documentation. I see some red there. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do here, instead of accepting everything, is I'm going to take the auth service, cool. I'm going to take the prompt service. But I'm going to discard the download service because I don't feel good about that one. And boom, we're done, right? And now we've got some really nice documentation. And look at how good O1 Mini is at doing JS docs, right? It's just really, really good at this job. Phenomenal. All right. There's one last thing I want to do. And I hesitate. I hesitate to do this. <laughs> but I'm going to try to use this new editing experience to add a feature that I've been meaning to add for months just right here in this demo. It's pretty bold. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. We're going to do it anyway. So I'm going to open up here. I'm going to grab the download service because I wrote this app, so I know something about it. And what I want to do is use this editing experience to work with a single file, OK? You can work with multiple files, but you can also work with a single file. And it's a powerful experience for this, especially when you know exactly what you need to do. So let's give this a shot. Here we go. 
Everybody, cross your fingers out there. My please. heart is pumping. M mine is too. <laughs> I'm actually going to switch back here to GPT 4.0, and I'm going to, I'm going to, let's do this. Add the ability to download comments from the YouTube API. You can return the comments in the same response as the captions. All right. So what you just saw there was me use something called VS Code Speech. And VS Code Speech is free. We build it. It's cross-platform. It's available to everyone. All you have to do is click on that mic button. And if you don't have it, we'll help you get that extension installed. And then let's see and look, let's look what it's done here. So it's added the Google APIs package. Cool. Looks like it's added a get YouTube comments function. It's changed the response. Let's scroll down to the bottom. All right, so this looks pretty good. The only thing it's missing, I just want to ask for one more thing. It looks like my API key is missing. Can you add it securely from the process.env variable? So the cool thing about chat is that you can, you can uh, iterate with the model, and now the model can iterate right here in your code, right? So let's go ahead and accept this. We'll save. I've never been so nervous in my life. <laughs> I'm going to bounce the API. Let's go ahead and collapse this. It's back up and running. Let's go back to our application. <laughs> There's no shot this works. <laughs> Why did I do this? Clear, paste in, set source. Did it work? There's the captions. Do we have comments? Scrolling, scrolling. I think this is about a 10 minute video. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost there. Oh my gosh, oh, we do. We have awesome. comments. We have comments. All right, awesome. So now, <laughs> incredible, incredible. Now, because we've added that, we can say, uh, please analyze the comments for insights, even if we can't spell analyze correctly. Models don't care. They're really, really good at misspellings. By the way, if you're correcting your misspellings to GitHub Copilot, you don't have to do that. It's fine with your misspellings. And just like that, we've got set up with, what did we do? We did testing. We did debugging. We did documentation. And we even added a feature all in the span of what I hope was eight minutes, because that's yeah, all, that's that's all you gave me. All right. Thank you, Burke. Thank you so much. Great to see you, universe. Thank Have you a great, great, great conference.